Hello everybody, welcome to Surge Online and it is now December. Amazing, that means we're nearly at Christmas, I cannot wait. And neither can my son. Anyway, tonight we have an amazing challenge from a man returning to the screen and potentially returning in general as nobody has seen him except if you're ordering a Big Mac for the last six months. And that is Josh Owen. And he has got an incredible challenge for us all tonight. So if you'd like to have a go at that, that would be great. And then we're going to be followed up by a great message from Charlotte. So listen up for that. And yes, that is what we've got. So in a minute, Josh is going to come on and I'll speak to you after. Right, guys. So today, your challenge is to take a pot and 20 playing cards and you're going to set the pot up about two meters away. Try and get as many of the cards in the pot as you can. If you get one, I'll be impressed because I struggle with it. Anyone who can beat that, well played. Hi everyone, I uh, hope you're all alright. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today for a few minutes about um, Jesus being our hope for the future. Full disclosure, I've got something completely different to share and then about halfway through the day yesterday I suddenly started to think about the fact that I wanted to talk to you about Jesus so obviously um we've just started our advent season advent literally means the arrival of a notable person or thing so obviously at the minute we are waiting for the arrival of Christmas um, but also as Christians we're celebrating the fact that um this leads us up to the big celebration of Jesus's birth because Jesus is the reason for this season. Um, and so that's pretty exciting. And for us, it's a season of hope. Um, and we hope for presents that we're going to receive. We hope for the food that we really like. We hope, especially this year, we've been hoping that we get to see our families, which we sort of do. Hopefully you're going to get to see all or most of your families this Christmas. Um, and then also we celebrate Jesus, who is our hope for the future. And um, we celebrate the fact that he was born 2000 years ago, but he's still having such a lasting impact on all of our lives. Um, and so I wanna read from Isaiah um, chapter nine, verse six. Now Isaiah's in the Old Testament. Um, and that might sound like a really weird one, but there are lots of um, things in the Old Testament, like we've told you before, that point to Jesus coming in the New Testament. So we're going to Isaiah 9, 6, and it says this. It says, for a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, um, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, and Prince of Peace. Um, and so I just want to break down this verse for you a little bit um like i said we are in advent season and um it's such um, an exciting thing i don't know about anybody else but whenever christmas is coming around i start to get really excited i start to watch all the christmas cheesy christmas films as well like i don't need them to be serious um and it's just such a a season of anticipation waiting for actual christmas day um i am someone as well that loves the fact that it gives me a reason to be able to eat chocolate even if it's just a tiny bit from my advent calendar at seven o'clock in the morning what's not to love about that um and this verse is one that is so full of hope as well because it's a verse that tells us 
firstly that Jesus is coming but secondly some of the characteristics and things like that of what he will be like so what he is like for us now and so the first bit is for us a child is born so it's reminding us that Jesus is born um, with purpose and he was born for us it says for to us a child is born and that's because the significance of Jesus impacts all of us not just Mary and Joseph but it impacts all of us the next one says to us the son is given and that's a really important reminder that <clears throat> Jesus is God's son and he was given to us to to help us and to be our hope for the future um, the government will be on his shoulders. I'm going to lie, guys. I'm not completely sure what this bit means. But for me, I always read it that everything kind of rests on him. Um, and everything finds its purpose and its plan through him. Um, and we just have to submit to Jesus. Like he's the highest authority. So even the government have to submit and bow the knee to Jesus. He's like more powerful, more important than them. Um, and then it goes into this beautiful bit where it says he will be called um, Wonderful Counselor. Jesus is the best friend that you will ever have. He's one of those people that you can sit down and offload absolutely everything to, no matter how many times he'll keep coming back. And um, particularly through the Bible, he's always going to be ready and available to give great advice through the Holy Spirit um, at work in us. Um, so he's like the best counsellor you'll ever have. The best person to go to is Jesus, mighty God. Jesus is strong um, and nothing is too hard for him. I think sometimes we think of Jesus and it's the whole Jesus, uh, gentle Jesus, meek and mild thing. And he is gentle and he is loving, but he's also strong um, and he's also a fighter. He's a warrior. Um, and I think it's some. Uh, it's important to remember that where it says mighty God Jesus is God we can't get into the Trinity right now but he is strong um, and he can look after us the next is everlasting father um, now for some people you might have had a, an amazing earthly father and that's great but for a lot of people I know that this is going to be a difficult one for me it used to be difficult because I know I've mentioned before my dad left when I was 12 he wasn't a particularly great <laughs> dad before he left and then I've not seen him since and so for me the idea of God being a father used to be a really difficult thing um but one of the things that I've realised um, walking through life is that actually God is the best father we can have. He is everlasting. God is not somebody who is going to leave us or forsake us. He loves us. He cares for us. The Bible is full of examples of God time after time after time coming to help people, um, coming to... Um, try and get us out of trouble to guide us away from trouble in the first place but then still come into our rescue when we get ourselves into trouble um and that's such a beautiful thing and it, he's an everlasting father which means he's never gonna go away no matter what we do no matter how many times you turn your back on on him god will still be there waiting um and i think that's such a beautiful beautiful thing um the last one as well is prince of peace you know there's no anxiety in jesus no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in um and that's not to say that we're not going to go through difficult circumstances but no matter what circumstance we find ourselves in we can have a peace in that situation um the bible says that there is a peace that passes all understanding and that peace is found through jesus um, and so that's pretty amazing and I love the fact that just that one verse makes me really excited and it just fills me with hope Jesus being in my life gives me hope for the future um, he is everything that we will ever ever need everything we need is found in him um, and like I said that's not to say that life won't be difficult at times life's not always going to be easy because we are a Christian but what it does mean is that the circumstances that we face we will find it easier to deal with those circumstances if we allow him into our life and we allow him to help us and guide us um, and that's why our hope for the future is found in him all things hold together 
Um, and our walk with the Lord is not about rules and regulations. It's about trusting that Jesus has our best interest at heart. You know, in Jesus, we find peace, we find safety, we find hope um, and we find light. And life is just um, so much better when he's in our lives. Um, and that's why we celebrate. There's a big um, Christian, it's like a bit of a Christian cliche cliche I think I said it at the beginning which is that Jesus is the reason for the season um and it's true um if he didn't exist we wouldn't have Christmas is his name is in it um but also I would massively encourage you this season so between now and Christmas day and always but particularly between now and Christmas day take a few minutes every day to not only remember that Jesus is the reason for this season but to focus on why why that is so look in your bible get on google if you need to and google verses about jesus's character and read about him <clears throat> and take a few minutes every day just to to think about that and to meditate on that and ask him to reveal himself to you um it will mean putting your phone down for a little bit but it won't be wasted time i can promise you that um and it's such a um it's such a beautiful and full life when you allow Jesus into it, guys. And I'm excited. This year's been a little bit rubbish, but I am still excited about what's going to come. So I hope you're all doing all right. Don't forget Jesus is the reason for the season and we find our hope for the future in him. Bless you all. Amazing. Thank you, Josh. And also thank you, Charlotte, for that great message. It was great this week. So guys, that is the end of tonight's Surge Online. Thank you for joining us once again. Please keep your eyes peeled on Facebook and Instagram for any new announcements we may be doing over the next few weeks. Um, and yeah, it's been great to have you with us. Let us know if you've got any prayer requests or anything, or you'd just like to get us a chat with us, that'd be great. Um, and yes, we'll be seeing you, if nothing not before, this time next week. See you later.